Hey everyone, welcome to the start of a brand new series here on the channel. In this series, I'm diving into D5 Render, learning it from scratch and taking you with me through the whole process. We'll be covering everything step by step, in order, starting from the basics and building up. So it's easy to follow and nothing feels random or out of place. Today, we're kicking things off with the first step, how to set up your Rhino model properly and how to import it into D5 Render the right way. So you're ready to start working efficiently. Let's jump right in. All right, guys. So obviously the first thing that we have to do is to download D5 Render. And you can do this by just going into d5render.com and then clicking on start for free. Now, once you click on this button, D5 Render will download right away. Once you download it, you just need to install it by double clicking on the setup file. Before we jump into D5 Render, let's go to our Rhino file. And this is going to be the model that we are going to be using for this D5 Render series. As you can see, we have modeled the entire city block alongside curbs, green areas, sidewalks, streets, and so on. And if I type in layers, you will also see that every object has its own layer. For example, if I right click on sidewalk and select objects, we have selected all of the sidewalks like so. Also the curbs, for example, right click, select objects, and so on. And this is very important because keeping a clean file will make your life a lot easier when importing it to D5 Render. If you want to follow along with me throughout this series, you can download this 3D model on my Patreon. Link is down below. I'm going to change this from an Arctic view to a shaded view. Now, one thing to keep in mind before importing this model into D5 is that every object already needs to have different materials. For example, we need to apply a material for the grass, another material for the windows, and another material for the window frames, for example. And because our file is so neat and everything is organized within layers, this is going to be rather easy. So let's go ahead and create new materials. I'm going to be typing in materials. And for example, I've already created one, which is grass. And for us to be a little bit more efficient, we are just going to be using colors. So different kind of colors for each object. So for example, for grass, I just used a green color. Now, in order to apply it, I'm just going to be right clicking on it, then go to assign to layers and I'll be selecting grass. Now click on OK. Now if you cannot see the material on the shaded view, you can go into options by typing in options, then go into view, display modes, shade it, and all the way down here where it says color and material usage, I'm going to change custom materials for all objects to rendering material. Then click on OK. And there we go. Now let's go ahead and create new materials for every other object. I'm going to now create one for the windows. So you just need to click on this add icon or add material icon, select custom and change the name from custom to windows. Now I'm going to pick the color right here. And for windows, we can use a light bluish color, something like this and click on OK. Right click and assign to layers again. This time I'll be selecting windows. Now click on OK and there we go. I'm going to do one more before I just speed up this process so you don't get bored. OK, again, let's go to this add material icon, custom. And for the street, we can use a darker color. Click OK, right click, assign to layers. And now let's just check street and click OK again. Now for the next objects, I'll just speed up the process. But don't forget to change the name of each material. So I'll be typing in street. Okay, and we are good to go. Now, what's the next step that we have to take? We actually need to map all of our objects. And that's pretty simple in Rhino. In order to map our objects all together, I'm going to be typing in cell all on the command bar. This way, I'll select all of my objects. And while selecting them, I'm going to be typing in properties, go into the texture mapping tab and change the type from surface to box. And as easy as that, I'm going to be closing this. And how can we export this to D5 render? Well, we have two options. We can either download the D5 live sync for Rhino, or we can just open D5 render and import it from there. And I'm going to show you how you can do it using these two alternatives. First, I'm going to run D5. So I'm just going to be typing in D5 in here 
and launch it. Next, let's go ahead and click on new. And in here we have the beginner's guide, which is actually pretty helpful. So I'm just going to be showing you what do we have in here. First, we have the selection tools. So if you're familiar with any other software such as Lumion or Unreal Engine, you will understand a little bit more how selection tools work. So basically you will be able to select any object that you use inside D5 Render. For example, trees, bushes, well, basically vegetation, cars, people, so anything you would like, it's going to be selectable, if you will, so you can move it around freely and positioning it wherever you want. I'm going to be showing you a little bit more of it in just a second. On this right top corner, we have the camera where we are going to be setting up our field of view or depth of field, for example. We also have the display where we can play around with the view mode and preview quality. We also have navigation, which again, we'll be going through in just a second. Up here, we can actually insert light, path and particles. And on the very top right side, we will be able to change the export image settings and also start the render queue. Let's check the next tab. So it's showing us what the orbit mode is all about. Basically how we can move around D5 render. By default, we will start as orbit mode, which we only need to hold and press the right click. And if we want to move parallel to our view, we only need to press the shift key. We also have the fly mode, which is more like a video game. But so far, I've liked a little bit more the orbit mode. And be aware that I'm just starting off from scratch with you guys. So I might change my idea. I might use the fly mode later on. But for now, orbit mode has been really, really nice. Let's jump into the next section where we have the open assets window, which is right over here on the top left corner. In here, we will be able to select models such as trees, people or cars. And I've also found out that the options down here where we have the brush, eraser and path tools are extremely helpful because it's gonna let us scatter around easily all of these 3D models. And that's pretty much it. Now let's jump into D5 Render. I'm going to enlarge this screen a little bit more. And this is so smooth. I really like the way that this is done. All right. And how can we import our model? We can do so by jumping into this import icon right here. Select the 3D model. By the way, if you're finding this tutorial helpful and you want access to the full project files like this one, you can check out my Patreon. It's a great way to support the channel and you'll get extra resources to speed up your own learning. Links in the description if you want to take a look. Okay, now click on open and it is down here where it's going to be downloaded. So I'll just click once and place it on D5 render. Okay, so before we move on, Let's see what we've just learned. First, we have the move and rotate. So if I click on it, I'll be able to select in this case, my model. However, if I just click on it like so, it's actually scaling it and not moving it. So what we need to do is just to press the V key and this way we will be able to move our model on every axis such as the X, Y and Z. In between these two, we have circles. So this one will be moving our model on the X and Z axis. And the same thing with the others. In this case, on the Y and Z axis. And last but not least, we are going to be able to move this model on the Y and X axis, while these semi arches will be actually rotating the object. And the same thing with the scaling tool. If I press V, this scaling tool will be activated. And for example, if I take this square right here, we are going to be able to scale it on the X and Z axis. The world coordinate system will keep the X, Y and Z axis based on the construction plane, while the local one will be based on each object. But for the meantime, let's just leave it at world. And as for the eyedropper, it's there so that we can choose the material. So once we apply materials to each object on our model, we will be able to select it by just picking the eyedropper tool and clicking on our materials such as grass, for example. In order to deselect this eyedropper, we can just go ahead and click on move and rotate up here. Now let's jump into display as we are not going to be setting up our camera just yet. On the display mode, Similar to Rhino, we can choose wireframe to see our model as meshes. We can choose the clay mode and then we have dynamic or still. Now, what's the difference between these is that dynamic is going to lower the quality of our viewport, but it's going to make our movements a bit more smooth. So I would suggest to keep it as dynamic because whenever we're moving around the model or moving our camera around, this will keep D5 render running smoothly. While still, it's going to increase the quality of our viewport whenever we are still, but it's going to reduce that smoothness from the render engine. 
So let's keep it as dynamic. Moving on, we have the navigation. So while we are in orbit, the only thing that we have to do in order to move around our 3D model is press and hold the right click from our mouse button like so. And in order to zoom in or out, we just need to use the wheel of our mouse, like so. If we need to move horizontally, just press and hold the shift key, and you can see that it's a very smooth way to move around inside the 5 render. This is something that I haven't seen in any other software, and it always takes a little bit of time to get used to camera movements, but not like this. So just right click to move around, use shift to move horizontally, and zoom in or out with the mouse wheel. And wherever my cursor is, that's where I'm going to be zooming in or out. Unlike in Rhino, for example, we need to actually select the object, then zoom select to it, and then we will be able to zoom in or out. So this is really, really great. However, if we wanted to move differently, like on Enscape or Unreal Engine, we can use the fly mode. Now this is just like a video game, so it's W to move forward. And if we want to actually move faster, we can hold the shift key like so. So it's W to move forward, then D to move to the right side, A to move to the left side, and S to move backwards. Now if we want to move up or down, we would use Q for up and E to move down. Remember to use shift, but this is a little bit time consuming as you can see, so that's why I prefer going into the orbit mode. Now walking works the same way as fly, it's just that it gives us the impression that we are walking through our 3D model, which is kind of interesting. But again, in my case, I'll be using the orbit view. Now before we wrap up this first episode from our D5 render series, we're going to be looking at the second option of how we can import our model to D5 render, and it's using the live sync for Rhino. And we can grab it by going into D5 render website, go into workflow, and then Rhino, and just click on D5 live sync for Rhino. Make sure to save your Rhino file, and then just close it and open it again. Once you do that, you'll have this extra toolbar like this, and you can just drag it and place it on your toolbar up here. Now before we start synchronizing, make sure that you have closed D5 render on the other file. Now I'm going to be clicking on connect to the D5 render, and if it doesn't work, you can go ahead and disconnect from D5 render by right clicking and then clicking on connect to D5 render. And in here we can go ahead and select new project. And that's it, we've got our 3D model ready. And the difference between these two is that in this case, I can already see the materials that I've set up in Rhino. And if I just minimize this a little bit, so move it towards the right side, and if I start moving the camera around, you'll see that D5 render is actually following the movements from our camera in Rhino, which is awesome. I can even go ahead and pick any object here on the software, move it around, and automatically this will also be happening on D5 render. I guess this will be extremely helpful as we move forward throughout this series. So these are the two ways that you can import the file to D5. And that's it for today's first step. I hope this helped you get a clear start with setting up Rhino and importing into D5 render. In the next video, we'll keep building on this and start exploring how to set up our first scene inside D5. Also, if you're enjoying this series and want to support the channel, you can join my Patreon. It really helps me keep creating these videos and sharing everything for free. Plus, all the valuable resources from this series, like 3D models, materials, and more, will be uploaded there for you to download and follow along. You'll find the link down in the description if you want to check it out. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.